Welcome to my new West video. Today I will be explaining to you what you can do in the black zone and how you can make most profit in the black zone. Cue the exciting explosion. I will be also doing a 3 assassin hood giveaway. There will be a secret code hidden into the video so make sure to watch it fully to actually enter it. Let's get right into the video. So today I'm going to be showing you what you can do in the black zone. So I mean first of all what you can do. You can do roaming, you can do ganking, you can do gathering. You can also do crafting in your hideouts, which I will explain later. Almost forgot to mention, you can also get overrun by 200 Chinese people trying to get your 4-3 gear set. But the best thing of them all, you can do PvE for more fame. I know, right? Best option in the game. But the reason why I think Black Zone is the best zone in the game, of course apart from the zone your mother lives in, is because it also has the most areas or zones as you may call it as you can see the royal continent so the red zones yellow zones and blue zones all of them cover up the royal continent and the outlands known as the black zone continent is four times as big so this just means more zones more content more people as you can see there's a pve option and you can actually see how much the dungeon has in value so for example this is a low value dungeon right now so basically the same worth as your chest in town. The values will change over time but it just takes time to reach and the loot inside. That just means a group has done it recently. The next thing I will be covering are the castle outpost. These are the little towers looking like small castles on the map. The loot or the chest spawn in the outposts every 3 hours. And it actually takes 60 minutes for them to open after they spawned. There are also different rarities, like green, blue, purple and golden. Of course the golden is legendary, purple is rare, blue is uncommon and green is the common one. So depending on the rarity, that's the value you're going to get. It's still luck based since it is Albion. Another thing I just remembered is that actually the static dungeons have connections to the maps next to them. So the main entrance you can actually tell the difference on the map, it's like a actual structure. But you will only see the extra entrances once you zone into the map or inspect it. They are easy to find so you shouldn't have much trouble doing so. Another kind of objective you can do is chasing nodes. Or objectives, these are all the chests or the point four nodes that spawn. So the lower the tier, the less it takes for them to open. It also depends on the zone that it is in. As you can see, there are also a lot of outposts, so you can actually choose where you want to go and what groups you can fight. So coming back to the east side of the map, we can see that there's actually a purple a rare outpost here. The same color of the scar my father gave me. I also want to mention that there are world bosses around the map, so these are the big fucking mobs standing in the map. But the bosses are really going to be contested, so you might have a hard time getting them as a small group. There are also going to be rats around, so be careful and keep an eye out for them. As you can see there are also safe zones in the middle of black zones, for example we saw Arthur's Rest and a lot of different cities inside of the black zone. So you can actually go and deposit there if you want. And also there are trading posts or trading outposts, these are the chests on the maps. There are a lot of them, so you should see around one every three or two maps. I mean this is just helpful, so when you want to fight you can actually deposit your loot. So you know when you might die, you can actually put your loot into the chest and just go fight and also i want to cover hideouts so newbies who actually just joined the game and don't know anything about the black zone so basically the hideouts are placed by guilds into the black zone to actually set the home there so they can come out faster and fight again if they die during a fight but there are also headquarters so the difference between a hideout and a headquarter is that a headquarter cannot be smashed but a hideout can so to place a hideout it takes two days and in those two days, anyone can come and just break it. But if someone wants to break it later, they need to own the territory your hideout is in. So for example, if you control the territory, you don't need a headquarters because you don't need to worry about anyone smashing it. But if you create a headquarters, no one can smash it, not even the territory owners in that zone. And also the hideouts can only be smashed on the first 20 minutes of the zone's prime time. The prime time is on top of your screen once you open the map and inspect it. You can set your home in these hideouts or headquarters and you can also place them in the Avalonian roads in a hideout zone next to a crystal. But a lot of people don't like that because it's just annoying to navigate around the roads. Now, 
on to the most contested objective, it's the territories. The territories come in different shapes, so this means there are farming ones that have around 9 farming plots, I mean 8 on them. And there are normal ones that just have the castle and protection. So you can see who owns the territory, you can see who's attacking it also. But to attack a territory you need to launch on it first. That means you have to kill the guards and the mage, the main mage, the boss at the tower. You need to kill them in the prime time and you can just go next to the tower and press launch if you have the permissions in your guild. It will automatically start an attacking session that will start on the next day's prime timer. And at the start of the prime timer you already need to be inside the enemy's territory and you just press on the territory's tower and you press claim or whatever the fuck it says. You just have to cast on it for around I think it was 30 seconds maybe. And once you've done that the territory should get claimed and the defenses should come back up. You also get more PvE fame in the black zone. And there are also gathering spots just like in the red zone. You can see them on the map, they usually have a bunch of nodes on them, so for example you can see the animal herd, or like a cloth spot, or a ore spot. You can press on them to see the rarity, and they usually have a high density of those resources inside the area. As you can see, this is actually a hideout, so to get into it, you actually have to cast on it. When you come inside you actually have the travel planner next to you, you can only travel to the cities and other places when you are naked, so meaning you don't have any kind of loot on you. You also can mount up in the hideout to move around faster, so this just makes moving easier. There's a board on the side here, you just have to press set home so you don't have to cast again on the hideout to come inside. Here you can see the power level, the food level the crafting bonuses. You can also upgrade your hideout to level 2 from here using 20 million silver and multiple resources. You can also declare it into a headquarters from here. Here are the season points you actually need to declare it a headquarters in these kinds of zones and qualities. So once you go into a hideout in a black zone, one you have access to, it should be green, purple or blue. There might be a crafting station here. The fees are set by the owner of the crafting station and every single zone has its own bonuses. So for example I made a major tower into my hideout since I can craft fire staffs and cloth helmets for more resources back. You can view the bonuses by just opening the map and inspecting it closer, pressing there on the top right of your screen and it will actually pop up instantly. So as you can see my hideout is pretty small, it only has 5, I mean 6 building spots. It also has a chest in the middle of it, you can create more tabs by buying them, but you don't really need that many if you don't have a lot of stuff to put in there. But the hideout does get bigger once you do upgrade it. As you can see my hideout's small but it still has a good personality. As I showed before you also get a market, a place to sign up the hardcore expeditions and an artifact spot. Once you do get houses down, you can put laborers in them, in the hideout as well, so that's going to be extra money for you if you don't actually need to use those spots for anything else. I opened the map and also realized that one of the static dungeons troops were rallying. This means there will be more loot and the mobs will give you more fame. With the new wild blood update, you can also do tracking in the black zone or gank the trackers. So if you see a mob that is being tracked, you can just camp it and kill the people once they come to it. For example, I had a 5 man group, but we killed these two people running 8 trees. So it was a pretty good payout, but I mean, it's not the best since we still had to split it. If you're also wondering how I got this mammoth, I got it by just doing the methods I did in my last videos. So go check out my fame farming video and my silver making video. You will get the same profit as me. Also a small thanks to Tune ID for lending me the mammoth for 10 minutes. The last thing to do in the black zone is renting. So basically if you have a smaller guild or a smaller group of people, you can pay bigger guilds to actually defend your hideouts, territories or anything you want. You just need to have enough silver for it. So that's a pretty easy method to just control objectives without even having the people to do so. If you made it this far into the video, the giveaway code I mentioned at the start is actually in the description. So you could have just looked at it at the start of the video if you weren't such a dumbass. But of course, of course, go just check it out, comment your IGN, 
comment the extra password I put in the description. I know it's pretty secretive, but just do it and you might win the giveaway. I mean, as an assassin who is a lot of silver actually if you count it. Like 800k silver is nothing. I mean 800k silver is better than nothing. So thank you for watching my video for this long, I can't understand how you actually managed to. But if you want to be kept up with my content, go to my channel and subscribe, turn your notifications on. And I will see you in my next video. Twilight and the beautiful sea, I chose to be happy. You and I, you and I, were like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star, I see a vision of ecstasy. When you hold me, I'm alive, we're like diamonds in the sky.